Today we'll be speaking about health, wellness, and health disparities, chapter three. So the primary objective of the nurse as the caregiver is to promote health, prevent illness, and restore health, which I believe we covered that in the prior chapter. It's a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. It is not the absence of illness, which we briefly talked about in our chapter one. So I want special attention to morbidity. So you should know exactly what that is. And that is how frequently a disease occurs versus mortality. You need to know what that is as well. And that's the number of deaths resulting from a disease. So each person defines health in their own terms based on their beliefs and their values. So what may um, be healthy for one person may not be the definition of health for another. And culture, community, family, society influences everyone's perception of their health. There are three health states. They include wellness, disease, and illness. On page 56 into 57, it talks about all three. Wellness is the active state of being healthy, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. Disease refers to a medical term that is a pathological finding. So if you remember from our HBHD course, for those taking it, pathological refers to the study of a disease or something that is diseased. Illness refers to a person's response to a disease. Okay, so it involves a process where your body's trying to achieve that homeostasis, this change is happening in the body, trying to rectify the um, conditions that the disease is causing. Okay. So on page 57, it talks about acute versus chronic illness, which are the two types of illnesses. On our previous slide, we talked about illness being the body's response to disease. So with acute illness, this is something that can be treated. It is temporary, temporary and these symptoms are, have a rapid onset, and they usually last for a very short duration. So we're talking about um, infections that may be able to be treated with um, with uh, antibiotics such as pneumonia, pen, um, appendicitis, right? Then we have chronic illnesses, which are a slower onset. Sometimes they have periods of remission and exacerbation. So remission meaning that is now dormant, it's not causing complications, exacerbation is a flare-up where they are experiencing distress. So chronic illness causes permanent changes or irreversible alterations to the normal state, okay? So the body goes through changes that they cannot recover from and it becomes progressively worse. So think of COPD as a um, example. This requires long-term treatment. So they are going to see the doctor or specialist in reference to this um, condition. And usually are, they're taking medications routinely. Stages of illness and behavior, page 58 and 59. <laughs> there are four stages of illness behavior. So we have stage one, experiencing symptoms. Stage two, assuming the sick role. Stage three, assuming the dependent role. Stage four, achieving recovery and rehabilitation. So on this slide, I'll talk about stage one and two. On the next slide, we'll talk about three and four. For stage one, the person starts to experience some signs and symptoms of illness. So this is one or more symptoms that are incompatible with their personal definition of health. So this person may um, wait to see if these symptoms decide on their own. And if so, they may not um, pursue any further treatment. However, if in fact these, these symptoms persist or become worse, the patient may enter into the next stage, which is assuming the sick role. 
And then assuming the sick rule or stage two, the person now self-defines being sick and seeks validation for the experience from others, gives up normal activities and assumes the sick role. So this person may um, <clears throat> do some research on the internet, try to, de de um, try to determine what the illness is. They may purchase some over-the-counter medication to self-medicate, or they may seek health care um, assistance from a healthcare provider for diagnosis and treatment. So in our society, illness becomes legitimate when a healthcare provider actually diagnoses us and prescribes treatment. So after seeking help from the healthcare provider, the person becomes a patient and enters into the next stage, which is stage three, and we'll continue on the next slide. Stage three is on page 59. And in stage three, it is assuming the dependent role. The stage is characterized by the patient's decision to accept the diagnosis and to follow the prescribed treatment plan. So this person um, may be hospitalized um, and receiving treatment, or they may receive treatment and go home. However, the optimum outcome expected for both caregivers and families is to get well and to resume normal activity. So this person is now in the dependent role where they actually are receiving care until this illness um, is resolved. And so if they have a serious disease or a serious illness, such as a heart attack or stroke, they may be hospitalized for this treatment initially. Okay. And then they would finish in stage four, recovery and rehab. And recovery and rehabilitation begins in the hospital and concludes at home. Or it may begin in a rehab um, center or at home. So if you vis um, visit the primary care doctor office and you receive treatment, then your, your rehabilitation and recovery could occur at home. So they order you some antibiotics, you pick up your prescription from Rite Aid, you come home, take your medications, and um, remain in that dependent role until you completely recover, right? So think of COVID where you had to like self-isolate or quarantine yourself until you were, um, you, you recovered. So here's a question which is an example of an acute illness. And so some of you may not know some of these diagnoses and what they entail, but just try to do a process of elimination, um, knowing what acute illness means and see if you can determine the correct answer. I'll give you a minute. Okay, so if you answer C, pneumonia, you are correct. Pneumonia is an acute illness. It has rapid onset of symptoms. The treatment period is relatively short. You can treat pneumonia with antibiotics. Depending upon the severity, you might need some bronchial dilators or type, some type of breathing treatment. However, it will be resolved. It's temporary. Okay. How, when you have diabetes, diabetes is a chronic disease. It has periods of exacerbation, remission. So does rheumatoid arthritis and osteoporosis. These are all um, diseases that will progress. And when I say progress, I'm speaking of progressively become worse over time, especially if they are not properly managed. Okay. All right, question number two. Tell me whether this question is true or false. You have a person who is experiencing a cough and a fever. They take a sick day to recuperate and decide 
to make an appointment with the doctor. This person is said to be in stage three of illness behavior, assuming a dependent role. True or false? I'll give you a minute. 